Hello, and welcome to episode one of this tutorial series, an introduction to computer graphics with Vulkan and C++. At this point, you should have your development environment set up and ready to go. If you have not yet watched the introduction video, I recommend doing so now, and you can find it linked in the description below. It goes over what this series will cover and contains instructions on how to set up your development environment. My recommendation for how to get the most out of the series is to follow along with the coding in each video. Alternatively, I've also linked the GitHub repo for this project, which contains the code for each tutorial for anyone who prefers to download it and make their own adjustments. Now, assuming you've completed that section, you should have a main file that looks something like this. Let's compile and run our code, and an empty window should open up. And if you look in your console, some output saying how many extensions your GPU supports. If you've got that, you're good to go, and it means everything has been set up correctly. And since we want to start from scratch, let's delete this code. So let's create a class to wrap some window-based functionality. I'll call my file lve underscore window dot hpp for little Vulkan engine window, but feel free to call your project whatever you want. I'll be using Pragma once since my compiler supports it. If your compiler does not, don't forget to use define header guards. We'll put our code in a namespace, also called LVE, and let's make a class for our window. Start by creating a private variable that is a pointer to a glfw window. We need to include the glfw3 header file. So as mentioned in the development environment tutorial setup, glfw is a platform agnostic windowing tool. This means we can use it to open a window without worrying about if we're running on Mac, Windows, or Linux. We include this define of glfw include Vulkan to signal that we want glfw to also include the Vulkan headers with it. Now, let's add a helper function which we'll use to initialize our window and some member variables to store the window's width, height, and name. For window name, we will use a standard string, so we'll need to include that as well. Next, we'll create a public constructor, which takes the values that we'll use to initialize our member variables. And we can't forget to have a destructor to clean up our window for when we're done using it. Okay, so now add a corresponding CPP file for your method implementations. We'll include our header file and put our code in a namespace. Let's start by implementing our constructor. Our constructor is pretty basic. We'll use a member initializer list to initialize our member variables. Then, in our constructor body, we'll call init window. Next, let's implement init window. First off, we need to initialize the glfw library by calling glfw init. Now, we're going to use the window hint command to tell glfw not to create an OpenGL context. So, glfw was originally designed to create an OpenGL context when a window is created, but since we're not using Vulkan, we do not want that. Therefore, by using the noAPI hint, we disable this functionality. Next, we're going to use another hint to disable our window from being resized after creation. This is because we'll need to handle window resizes in a special way, which we'll cover around tutorial 10. Now use the create window command with width, height, and window name to initialize our window pointer. For windows title, we need to pass a C style string. The fourth parameter is for if we want to make a full screen window. For now, let's just stick with window mode, so use a null pointer. And for the final parameter, we can ignore this as it's related to if we're using an OpenGL context, which in this case we're not. Finally, we can't forget to implement our destructor where we need to destroy the resources we required at initialization. First, use the destroy window command and pass in our window pointer. 
Then lastly call glfw terminate. Okay, we're almost there. Let's create a new class, which is going to be what controls our application. We'll add a header guard and include the window wrapper class we just created. Let's put our code in the same project level namespace and create first app class. Add a private member variable for our LVE window. So when our first app class is created, a window will be created and opened. And when our first app is destroyed, our window is automatically destroyed. Note that we're not using a pointer or any dynamic memory allocation. Let's also define some constants for our window width and height for now. I'll use 800 for width and 600 for height, but these can be whatever you want. Let's add a run function, and for now add braces, so it has an empty implementation. We'll fix this in a moment. Now, in our main file, include our first app class, and add a main function. Create an instance of our app and let's call our run function surrounded by a try and catch. We don't throw any errors for now, but we may in the future. We'll need to include a few header files from the standard library. Include C standard lib, IO stream, and standard accept. If there's an error, we'll just output it to the console. And let's return either failure or success for our program. If I try making my program now, I'll get an error because I haven't updated my make file. So for those of you who are also using a makefile, here's my simple makefile, and I'll change it to use all CPP files in this directory, and also add a dependency on our header files. But most of you should not have this problem if you're using an IDE like Visual Studio or Xcode. I recommend using whatever you are personally most comfortable with, as I won't really be covering this topic. Now, if we compile and run our code, we can see the program is successful, but nothing happens and that's because our run function is empty. Start by removing the empty implementation for run in your first app header file. Then let's create a corresponding CPP file include our first app header add our namespace and let's implement run. We're going to use a while loop and call a made up function on our window to see if it wants to close. We'll call this function should close. Inside our while loop call glfw pull events, which checks and processes any window level events. So all this function does is while our window does not want to close, pull window events. Window events can be things like keystrokes, or for what we care about in this case, a user clicked the X button to dismiss the window. So now let's add this should close function into our LVE window header. Add a public function called should close that returns a Boolean. And since this is just a single line function, I think it's fine that it's inlined. So right here, let's implement it and we'll call the glfw function querying whether or not the user has tried to dismiss the window. Okay, let's save our files, build and run, and nice. We have a window, we can move it around, and we can close it. Exactly what we wanted.
So that's pretty much it for this lesson. One last thing we may want to do is delete the copy constructor and copy operator from our window class. This is because we're using a pointer to our GLFW window. Throughout this series, we will be adhering to resource acquisition is initialization. What this essentially means for us is that resource creation happens when we initialize our variables and our cleanups are performed by our destructors. So in this case, we don't want to accidentally copy an LVE window and then have two pointers to our GLFW window because when one of these objects destructors are called, the shared GLFW window would be terminated and we'd be left with a dangling pointer. Well, thank you for getting this far. Things will be a bit slow for the first few tutorials as there is a lot of info to get through. But once we get to tutorial five, things really start to pick up. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials as soon as they come out. Thanks.